Silence. Total silence in the audience. Everyone had their eyes focused on the center of the stage, awaiting the boy to continue reciting the book. Why did he stop? They all wondered. <gasps> did he forget? This was a moment I would never forget. It was the year I turned six. My mom signed me up for my first public recital. I had to memorize and recite the whole entire Deeds of the Great Book. Naturally, I practiced day after day, night after night. It took a whole five months, but the moment came. I had it all memorized and ready to recite. And then it happened. I walked on the stage feeling rather confident, stepped to the middle of the stage, and looked at the wave of people staring back at me. And it immediately hit me. My first true experience of stage fright. I started shaking and my brain stopped working. Uh, I barely managed to mutter out the first line before my mind went blank. I had forgotten the rest of the lines. All those months I spent memorizing, gone. I had to stop and just stand there, looking rather stupid, waiting for something to come into my head. Naturally, nothing happened. And then my mom realized that I had forgotten the lines, so she came running with the book. I had to recite the rest while crying and looking at the book. It was a rather embarrassing moment. That is what stage fright is to some people. It is the feeling that you are getting overwhelmed by the sheer amount of people that you are presenting to. It doesn't have to be a lot of people, actually. As long as you are presenting to someone, you naturally get nervous. Trust me. This is not an easy thing to overcome. Just now, you don't know how many takes it took for me to get the speech right, the amount of times I had to restart because I stuttered, or that I felt unsatisfied with the end product. That is often another cause of stage fright. The fear that what you are saying is not perfect, or a lack of self-confidence. According to Top Doctors UK, stage fright is mainly caused by five factors. Number one, an unrealistic assessment of what is expected of you. Basically meaning that you are expected to do something that you may not be able to. Two, underestimation of your capabilities. This comes from yourself and it's exactly what I meant by a lack of confidence. People are underestimating what they are actually capable of and begin thinking that they are not good enough for what they are going to do. Number three, overestimation of the opinions of others. People fear that they will receive negative feedback on their actions or presentation, and so they begin feeling anxious. Number four, unrealistic expectation of others' responses to anxiety. When people make a mistake in the performance, they begin over-dramatizing their mistake, causing them to feel even more anxious about how others will respond to their mistake. And number five, overestimation of the idea of rejection. This is where you begin thinking that you, no one will listen to your presentation, and it ties directly with a lack of confidence. Now, those were the root causes of stage fright, but what are some reactions that people get when experiencing stage fright? The common symptoms are sweating, mental confusion, headaches, an urge to leave the situation, stuttering, or frequent slash long silences. People will sweat uncontrollably, uh, their mind may go blank, their head may start spinning, they want to leave the stage, this does this, 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 the stuttering, right? or they have silences. In my scenario, what I experienced was mental confusion. My mind went blank, and I forgot what I was going to say. So, to clarify, stage fright is not only associated with presentations or recitals. According to Top Doctors UK once again, stage fright or performance anxiety is a state of anxiety or fear which occurs when an individual is faced with the requirement of performing in front of an audience, either directly or through a screen like right now in front of a camera. Right? It affects all kinds of people who have to appear in front of an audience even when they are not necessarily speaking. For example, it can affect musicians, dancers, politicians, or athletes. Public speaking is also reported to be the f biggest fear among American adults. So, how can we overcome this fear? Well, learning to improve your speaking or performance skills is good. 
learning how to connect with your audience, how to gauge their attention, but it's generally not enough to substantially reduce your fear. You must address any negative perceptions, beliefs, thoughts, images, and predictions related to public speaking or performing. And it's often helpful to reveal the fears related to being seen or heard by others, showing vulnerability or being considered less than perfect. Learning to accept yourself, gaining a higher level of self-confidence, and not feeling that you have to prove yourself to others is basically the root of healing this fear. According to Anxiety and Depression Association of America, there are 10 tips that they recommend when overcoming this fear. Number one, shift the focus from yourself and your fear to your true purpose, contributing something of value to your audience. So get your point through. Try to communicate your point so that they understand. Number two, stop scaring yourself with thoughts that about what might go wrong. Like saying that I didn't practice this part, so I might make a mistake here, I might make a mistake there. Instead, focus your attention on thoughts and images that are calming and reassuring. So focus on the parts that you did well. So I practiced a lot on this portion, so I'm definitely going to ace this part. Right? Number three, refuse to think thoughts that create self-doubt and low confidence. Don't think about stuff that will lower your self-confidence. Four, practice ways to calm and relax your mind and body. Don't be so stiff on stage, such as deep breathing, relaxation, exercises, yoga, and yes, meditation. Number five, exercise, eat well, and practice other healthful lifestyle habits. Try to limit caffeine, sugar, and alcohol as much as possible. Number six, visualize your success. This is important. Always focus on your strengths and abilities to handle challenging situations. Number seven, prepare your material in advance and read it aloud to hear your voice. I suggest by practicing at a bathroom mirror by yourself. This way you will get comfortable with what you are going to say. Number eight, make connections with your audience. Smile and greet people, thinking of them as friends rather than enemies. If it really doesn't work, try to ask one of your family members or someone you trust to sit in the audience. Whenever you're feeling anxious or scared, make eye contact with them. Number nine, stand or sit in a self-assured, confident posture. Remain warm and open and make eye contact. And last but not least, number 10, give up on trying to be perfect. And know that it is okay to make mistakes. Be natural and be yourself. I believe that these tips can help a lot when it comes to combating stage fright. It definitely helped me a lot when I was trying to overcome stage fright. I especially believe that practice is very important. Make sure you recite your speech multiple times to ensure that you can listen to yourself. As well, try to perform topics that you are extremely comfortable with. That way, you can be more confident in what you are saying slash doing. I hope that these tips can help those of you watching this that need help with overcoming stage fright. Public speaking is a very important aspect of life, no matter where you are. That is why overcoming stage fright is a very important step towards being successful in the future. I hope that you enjoyed my speech, and thank you for listening.